Well, I finally received my red, yellow, green and blue LEDs, 3mm LEDs. And what I'm doing is making up a chart of forward voltages at two different um, current ratings, 5 milliamps and 25 milliamps. And I'm using the uh, butt converter here. And uh, I must admit, I did think this would be a little bit um, inaccurate because this thing can go up to 3 amps. Well, that's 3,000 milliamps. And I'm using it down at the uh, 5 milliamp range. But it does seem quite uh, accurate, quite capable of quite fine-grained control. That's 5 milliamps. Then if I go down to 4, 3, 2... One zero. If you look at the red LED that's in the output socket there, uh, one milliamp, two, three, four, five. It has quite impressive control, even at the very low current levels. But anyway, I'm measuring voltage at five milliamps. So for red, it's uh, one point eight five volts, and I've uh, completed the chart for all the four colors, but also for this um, Sharp PC817 Opto Isolator. And uh, the voltage for that is quite a bit different from the other LEDs. Blue is by far the highest at three volts at five milliamps. Then green, yellow, and red are all quite similar about 1.9, 1.85. And the infrared LED in the Opto is 1.15. The forward voltages are all a bit higher at 25 milliamps, um, but I just wanted to get a, a, a range of currents, a range of forward voltages between these two current levels so that I can uh, get an idea of um, how to put my, together my uh, dual complementary opto isolator MOSFET driver. So this is how the LED side of the decoy driver works. Let's start with a single red LED and a 220 ohm resistor uh, powered with 5 volts. Now these nickel metal hydride batteries are about 1.25 volts each when they're fully charged. So that's almost exactly 5 volts uh, across the LED and the resistor. So now I've got two LEDs in series and so the forward voltage uh, of the two LEDs is higher than with one, of course, so there's less voltage across the resistor and therefore less current flowing through it, and so the LEDs aren't quite as bright, although it's hard to tell um, with just two. So let's now go to three. So with three LEDs, uh, most of the five volts from the batteries is being uh, dropped across the three LEDs. The forward voltages of them add up to almost five volts. So there's very little voltage across the resistor, and therefore very little current flowing through it. And finally, with four LEDs, they're not lit at all. Their forward voltages add up to more than five volts, and so there's no current flowing through them at all. And in fact, now we don't need the resistor, so I can lift this red wire and put it directly onto the, uh, what would it be, the anode, of that first LED and there's no current flowing through there. Well, there may be a little bit, but um, not enough to light the LEDs. So we've got a circuit where no current's flowing. The LEDs are all off, even though they're strapped directly across the power supply. Now I've repositioned the resistor so that it's connected to the midpoint of the four LEDs to the uh, connection between the middle two. And now if I short or connect the resistor to the zero volts, the top two LEDs come on, the ones that are connected to positive, and if I connect the resistor to five volts, the bottom two LEDs come on. So if I now connect this um, resistor here to the output of my Arduino, running the standard blink program, one second on, one second off. The LED on the Arduino is just going on and off, but the LEDs on the decoy driver are alternating between the low pair and the high pair. And this complementary action 
is being generated in hardware. It doesn't rely on software, so it's not as if uh, a software error could accidentally turn all these four LEDs on at the same time. It simply can't happen. And the other thing is that as they swing, as the voltage at this point here on the resistor swings from zero to five volts, there will be a very tiny um, dead band, a point where all the LEDs are off. And that's um, important because what you don't want is for the LEDs uh, one side and the LEDs to the, the other side to be um, simultaneously on for any length of time. You really want the opposite, you want a gap. And this, I haven't measured it on the oscilloscope, but this should have that dead band gap. And then the final step is to replace the two middle LEDs with two opto-isolators so that the LED side, this side, replaces the uh, red LEDs. Now I'm not sure whether you can see there in fact, I'll just turn the light off. But those two red LEDs are ever so slightly lit. And that's because the forward voltage of the opto infrared LEDs is that much lower than red. So now there is a very tiny current flowing through that circuit. But if I connect up the Arduino signal, that problem actually goes away. You can see that um, the LED that's off is very definitely off. So as long as the um, microcontroller digital output is pulling the LED chain uh, one way or the other, then the LEDs are, or the off LED is most definitely off, and the OLED on LED is most definitely on. So that's how the um, LED side of the decoy driver works. And then what I'll do is uh, explain the opto transistor side in the next video.